action-packed day. In other news, Canada became a dictatorship today. It actually did. No longer democracy. Justin Trudeau has declared that he is fully in charge. He has declared martial law in Canada in response to the truck protest. He's also declared that they now control cryptocurrency and crowdfunding and your bank account. It's a dictatorship. That's what that's called. The tale straight showed up in Ottawa several weeks ago to protest the tyranny being imposed against them. The Prime Minister of Canada refused to meet with them or to speak to them. Instead, he fled the city. And then from his bunker, he called the truckers Nazis. When they still didn't leave the city, Justin Trudeau suspended democracy and declared Canada a dictatorship. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. So let's be clear, this is a defining moment in the history of Canada, in the history of the English-speaking West. The Emergencies Act is martial law. It has never been invoked in the history of that country. Now, by law, the Emergencies Act is allowed only in emergencies, in, quote, urgent and critical situations that seriously endanger the lives, health, or safety of Canadians. What's happening now does not qualify. What's happening in Canada now is not an emergency. Here's what it looked like this week. That tape is a terrorist, even the kids in their bouncy castles. Justin Trudeau has unilaterally revoked their civil liberties and authorized men with automatic weapons to haul them to jail. Trudeau was allowed for the arrest of this man, for example, making food for the terrorists. You can receive a free meal, irregardless of what faith you're from, what caste, creed, religion, doesn't matter. It's about the community kitchen. We all eat as one and humanity is equal. So the Seva concept, helping the community is what we're practicing here today. We're here alongside the truckers in the fight for freedom, and we're doing our part from the Sikh faith. So again, all of these people can now be arrested on site simply because of where they're standing. But being arrested is the least of their problems. An arrest suggests bail. You can get out of jail. You can't get out of the country Justin Trudeau has just made. Under martial law, Trudeau now has the power to force banks to seize their bank accounts and insurance companies to cancel their insurance. That means they can't actually live in Canada anymore. They are non-persons. They're enemies of the state and they will be crushed. At least one trucker knows exactly what's coming. He has seen him before. He came to Canada from Nikolai Ceausescu's Romania. Why did only people meant to vote? Why 100 people, 180 or 200 people to decide your life or my or another? Let, let the Canadian people do that. No? It's all corrupt too, all those people voting. It's sad, man. When when some people, they decide your life, like 300 people, they decide your life when you are 30 million. Yeah. Let us vote. So is it an overstatement to compare what is happening in Canada right now to what happens in a Stalinist dictatorship? Well, the slogans are different. In the Eastern Bloc, they used to talk about solidarity. In Canada, they talk about diversity. But the repression is similar. Today, Canada's deputy prime minister, by the way, is a former American journalist, maybe not surprisingly, announced that going forward, Justin Trudeau will regulate all crowdfunding currency under the Terrorist Financing Act. Really? So Justin Trudeau is now in charge of all of your finances. He's in charge of cryptocurrency? How, is that, how does that work? And on what justification? And if that wasn't clear enough, Trudeau's minority government unilaterally just sent another half a billion dollars to the authoritarian state of Ukraine, where the head of the rival political party is now under arrest and where opposition media has been banned. That's the country they're now in solidarity with. You can see where this is going. In fact, it's already there. Jonathan Shirley is a constitutional law scholar. He joins us tonight. Professor, thanks so much for coming on. Can you, in a democracy, just Thank declare you. yourself king and say, I'm regulating your bank account, maybe eliminating it, freezing it. I'm regulating what you say. I'm regulating cryptocurrency. Like, how, where do these powers come from exactly? Well, no, this could not be more serious. The fact is that Canada does not have the history of robust 
free speech protections that we had in the United States. It's, it's closer to England in that sense. But this should be chilling for every Canadian. You know, what happened to these truckers is really quite breathtaking. You know, this was an act of civil disobedience. We've had those types of acts and protests for generations. We celebrated those acts with the civil rights movement. That's what, right. uh, you know, it was referenced as, as causing good trouble, right? It is to, to act peacefully, but disruptive. And that has been done uh, through the generations. What would, you have a prime minister who declared these people insurrectionists, declared them terrorists, said they were threatening democracy itself. You have social media and the mainstream media echoing that, those attacks. And then, worse yet, as you noted, we have these crowdfunding sites that literally froze millions of dollars that average citizens wanted to give to support these truckers. Now, when you put all that together, you've extinguished the ability of thousands, perhaps even millions of people to express themselves through a form of civil disobedience. And according to, to Prime Minister Trudeau's definition, he could have shut down the civil rights movement. He could have arrested Martin Luther King. He could have arrested sure. any number of figures that we now celebrate today uh, as visionaries. Now, that doesn't mean that the truckers were right, it just, and it doesn't mean that they can block bridges. They can't. But what the government has done here is really at odds with very basic human rights and civil liberties. And, and you really get, I mean, if, if, if they're regulating cryptocurrency, which I'm praying is not actually possible, but they're saying that they want to out loud, then, you know, that's a, that's a pre-existing priority for them to establish social and political control. I mean, that, that's not related to the truckers, right? Right. Well, part of the thing is you, you sort of stand back and go, what? I mean, you, you have people who are engaging in what he calls occupation. That's a form of civil disobedience. And yet you go to death con four suddenly and you say, you know, I'm going to take control over banks and crowdfunding and cryptocurrency. All of this is because truckers descended on their capital to object to these mandates. Now, I happen to support vaccinations. I don't necessarily agree with the truckers, but what I have in common with the truckers is free speech right. and association. And when someone tries to deny that to them, they deny it to us. Exactly. Jonathan Troy, the last liberal in Washington, and I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks, Tucker. Appreciate it.